Hello everybody and welcome to episode 64 of the Pentagon Challenge where today we will take about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, fingers crossed, to uh, meet our new Vasco da Gama players and see how we can turn them back into the title challengers and possibly winners that they are supposed to be and uh, maybe even guide them to a cup final. We'll, we'll never know until we get it done but uh, before we actually meet the uh, squad let's just look at the results that I have acquired since taking the job. So you saw on my uh, first attempt uh, at a live cam with uh, Vasco da Gama, I won by two goals to one in that uh, rather feisty uh, Rio derby. Uh, Macales got the brace that got me off to the ideal start. And then better was to come in a thrilling 3-2 match. Uh, it was more thrilling in the clinical uh, finishing of the squads but then we decided we're going to push for this victory and by god did we get it so let me explain we had Marcus Perea uh, he scored in the 32nd minute to give Palmeiras the lead Karecha got an equaliser Perea got them the lead back we equalised again through Karecha and then with the very last kick of the game up came our shadow striker in the box he headed it right into the corner of the net where the keeper never stood a chance and we grabbed a massive massive victory and unfortunately their hero Perea has bruised his thigh I, I don't know if that's been uh, well he's just had another injury after that uh, dead leg but um, a fantastic turnaround from Vasco getting the results um, in a must win game as Palmeiras are right above us in the league table and I'll show you the league properly in a minute um, but it was just uh, spectacular how we got the result even though I've been told time and time again defend uh, your results as best you can and don't be too attacking but in that case I had to take um, the initiative and go for the win and we got it so that put us in a battle for the top five but then um, things have gone a little bit awry as uh, we got an away goal at Sao Paulo in their uh, Morumbi Stadium um, but it was such an early away goal as well. It was Emerson Fonseca who uh, got us off to the start that we needed. But then Douglas Coutinho, who is 30 years of age and is a very handy striker and right winger, he got the one goal back. But then neither team looked like breaking the deadlock, even though we were so, so um, you know far ahead in terms of quality with the shooting and the chances created we just get, didn't get enough on target so perhaps that could be a moment to regret in this uh, home leg now uh, against Botafogo we scored in the third minute again but typically like I have to say typically when these things happen we gave a goal straight away down the other end Judy Van was the uh, man who got the rebound uh, from his own shot and uh, that was all that I really want to talk about in that game. It was pretty boring as, uh, of course, I still have to remain defensively solid. So here is the uh, Brasileirao table. It's, you know, very, very difficult to call a winner from here. You can uh, make up for yourselves. Flamengo are on top on 52 points, but Atletico Mineiro down in 11th place are only 10 points behind. I can't call... Uh, what on earth could happen next but you look at Vasco we're the hardest team to beat um, as well as uh, the unlikely side of Atletico Paranese they've only lost five times as well this season but Brazil's system uh, is to sort out um, uh, tie breaks with games won so because we've only won 12 times we are uh, put down on the bottom of that three way tie with Palmeiras and Corinthians so we have to keep going and break into this top four under all circumstances if we had a won our game against Botafogo we would be in the top five right now even though Palmeiras have a game in hand but it's the likes of Santos, Cruzeiro, Gremio and Flamengo um, they're the pace setters at the minute but you look at Gremio and Cruzeiro they're perfectly tied it's only because of the 49 goals scored by Gremio that has given them the uh, the the tie break I suppose but Cruzeiro are in really bad form they've lost three games in a row that's just as bad as Fortezela down here and the bottom club Boa so massive concerns for Gremio there but Vasco if we stay unbeaten for a little while longer we could be calling ourselves champions of Brazil again but um, 
What is really exciting is that we play Crucerio, Gremio, Flamengo and Santos before the season ends. So I'll be live coming all four of those games and we'll see if we have any chance of winning the title in the next 66 days. But my main concern today is the Brazilian quarter quarterfinal uh, against the uh, mighty Sao Paulo who are another team in decline. But now let's finally head into our screen and meet these players that I'm sure you've been dying to be introduced to. So I'll just turn on the form and we can see how most of the guys have been doing. So let's introduce you to my starting goalkeeper who is actually cup tied today, Edmar Andre Andreini. Um, he has been signed by the club um, over the season from Mineiro um, and he's kept... Uh, uh, he's kept 10 clean sheets and he's conceded uh, 28 goals and 30 appearances, but I'm sure that's uh, kind of skewed by the Rio State Championships. But either way, he's a handy goalkeeper. I don't expect um, you know miracles from him, but he joined earlier in the campaign and he should be a very useful player. But Eduardo is on loan from Roma, I think. He, uh, he's a very young man at 23. Yeah, he's on loan from Roma and we'll see if he can do a good job for us today as he's the only goalkeeper we can play in this tournament as we don't have anyone else now onto the defensive side of the game we've got two equally good right backs uh, Carlos Matius um, he is one of them he hasn't played very often but I do consider him just as good as our other option um, he came from Inter Milan and Genoa previously a uh, pretty cheap signing but I think I'll give him a bit more time even though he got himself red carded against Fluminense he was very good against Sao Paulo and I expect good things from him uh, the other right back uh, who plays there naturally is Daniel Guedes he is the starting right back according to the previous manager but he doesn't look that much better than um, our other man but he's played extremely well in his appearances such as Palmeiras 7.2 and Botafogo 7.0 uh, he came here from Crucerio but if we look at his stats um, you can see he's pretty uh, solid, like he's got 15 long throws, 13 crossing and dribbling, 13 tackling, but he's not uh, a, you know, a gem of a player. I just consider him very solid. Uh, center back, but also a right back is Cesar Davis uh, from Ecuador. He's probably the only true international in the team as none of the Brazilians get capped. Um, so he is a star of the future, only 23. He's been here since 2022 where they bought him from Emelec from his native country but he's also played some time in Argentina so I think he could be really really good as the future goes by um, I have nominated him as a center center back and he has some of the uh, stats that you're looking for like absolutely fabulous mentals for definite but the the assistant manager tends to prefer him as the um, limited right back he's also very adept in that position um, and now if we look at the reports you can see some very good star ratings all round but some not so good at the same time now onto center backs properly we've got Nen a uh, very short name there um, he's also a young man I think he might be from the academy no he's from Gremio and he came in this year from Turkey uh, very good buy in my opinion but he hasn't played at all often so it's another case of the um, previous manager being very foolish with his previous players I think he's more than good enough to participate in this team and um, uh, with the lack of centre backs it's something we'll have to think, think about but now here's probably one of the three uh, Holy Trinity players Guillermo Centurion uh, we talked about him in the last episode but just in case you want to see him up, up close and personal have a look at some of these stats now 17 tackling 16 passing 16 technique 16 concentration decisions 18 teamwork 16 vision and uh, 14 stamina and 15 natural fitness he he should definitely be capped by Argentina he's getting into the stage of his career where he should be maturing into um, an all-round uh, fantastic midfielder but at 28 he will have to uh, get cracking because he has been in the game a very very long time such as at Racing Club but then for a free transfer he has been phenomenal um, very very impressed with him even though he has to play centre back for me most of the time he is still uh, one of the best players of the club um, we've also got um, who else do we have we have mostly youth players down on the bench there so don't worry about them uh, Adrielson isn't too good I don't really 
um, care about him, but he could be a good player. But he didn't play well against Botafogo off the bench, so I'll just have to see what he can do in the future. Uh, we've got two left backs only, so we could be in deep trouble if someone gets injured in this role. But the favoured left back is Ivo, and he is another example of a player who's consistent but not really spectacular. Um, but the stats at only 25 are still great, and he deserves uh, a prosperous career. He's played so many games this year. But uh, Ronaldo has uh, said, please play me, that you're the new manager. And I've tended to agree with that. He is a handy backup. But so far, he's another example uh, of solid. But uh, he's not really uh, a legend in my eyes. But Gremio, I think, made the wrong decision to sell him. Um, now, the midfield is where this team is mainly strong. We've got Alexandre on the bench here. He's just a little too tired to play from the beginning. But he'd be another Holy Trinity player. Um, is he a youth product? No, he came from uh, Sao Paulo, so he'll be against his former club perhaps today. And uh, look at uh, these stats again. He plays defensive midfield as a regista or in the centre of midfield as a playmaker. And you can understand why with the 18 passing, 16 first touch, 17 composure, 19 decisions and 16 vision. His physicals aren't so great, but they don't need to be if he is um, just... Uh, pinging the ball around and making sure he's not wearing himself out. But we've also got Leonar Leandro, number one, I suppose we'll call him. Uh, he's another uh, excellent playmaker, and he's had a pretty rough season. I don't know why he hasn't played so often. Uh, because like He should definitely be starting more games than coming off the bench, but he is a youth product, and uh, I want to keep him around as long as I can. Um, we're selling Ricardo Goulart in the uh, winter transfer or the summer transfer as it's now in the southern hemisphere I suppose um, he is a, getting old now 33 years of age he's, he would he would do his job for most other clubs but he has a history with some of my great rivals um, in the uh, Pentagon Challenge such as Guangzhou he was there before I arrived at Chenchua. Um he was a massive 15 million euros uh, from Cruzeiro, but he's also been in Egypt where if I had have made the African Champions League chances are I would have had to play uh, the legendary Egyptian club but he came to Vasco and he's been pretty good but I just think he has no uh, place to play in this team anymore as he is by far the oldest squad member um, we're also considering getting rid of Christian Barrios he is a really really good player but he's just not attracting the money uh, that we need and I'd like to keep him if at all possible. He's contributed nearly 11 assists um, in the league, but I'm sure um, you have to look at this one here. 11 assists in the first division and 11 in the Rio de Janeiro state. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah, I should have turned off the phone. Um, yeah. Um. Right, okay, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so he's a player I could get rid of, but it's not looking likely. I'll just have to accept uh, he's not going to go. Emerson Fonseca, also on the bench, could be a good player, but he's been shunned by the previous manager, and I'm going to try and get him uh, you know, happy again. But we'll see what we can do. Uh, Evander is big money for definite, 26 years of age. He's been a great player, but again, he's too tired to play, and he's been at the club since 2011, which is absolutely stupendous. And uh, some of these stats are very, very impressive, to say the least. And he was even there when Vasco were in their darkest period in the mid-2010s to uh, the mid -2010s as they got relegated. But he's brought them back up, and uh, he's obviously celebrated league success as well. We have Leandro on the bench, another good player. Uh, they're also similar, but um, we'll just have to try and balance uh, everybody. We've got uh, Karecha. He was the player who scored the hat-trick as the shadow striker. And, um, like, uh, you know, he, he, he's mainly a shadow striker only. I can't really play him in striker for some reason. He's just not so good. But uh, with these stats, I, I'm certain, I'll be certain of him scoring more goals as the season goes on. Like, he scored 11 in the first division and then 8 in the Rio de Janeiro. Um, and then uh, Sepulveda is also unhappy at the club. He hasn't played at all often, even though he's ra rated really well. But like he is a Argentinian, so he doesn't get, uh, you know, he does count as a foreign player. 
uh, but he's wanted so I'm going to try and keep him along as well he could be very very good but as I said the weakness as well as the strength of the club is that they've so many great players in the same position and uh, it, has, it has to be uh, considered uh, vital to play them all in my opinion so that's the bulk of the attacking midfield and now Macales gets a section all to himself because he's the only true out and out striker that uh, should be playing first team football and as you saw he's he's popped up with 11 goals in the campaign two of them are of mine but of course the Rio State Championship also counts as a league and then he played really well against Botafogo and I hope for the same uh, here, to against Sao, uh, here today against Sao Paulo um, we've also got some youngsters coming up such as Pedro um, he could be quality in the future but again I don't have the evidence to say otherwise he's only 17 uh, Alex um, another good player but, uh, again I have no evidence of them being good uh, Batista is actually injured he played a few of my games and uh, he could be a perfect backup where necessary but unfortunately he's yet to score uh, for me in the Premier League um, but we'll try and sort that out when he fixes himself up and then Carlinhos also a really good player but only 17 so I can't really tell what they can do for me uh, Michel's going to be retiring so even though he's been a good servant to the club he is going to be on his way out uh, I have no need for him anymore um, we've got Marcos Paolo he's here on loan but I haven't played him yet haven't felt the need to apart from against Botafogo actually I forgot about that there are a few other youth guys here that haven't uh, earned my uh, my attention just yet but some of them could be fabulous and uh, we'll just have to wait and see how they can cope and then we've got some signings that I've brought in as well but because of the transfer rules um, I think they can't play until the end of the season and into the start of the next season so I didn't know that but anyway Borges is here and uh, he uh, will be a ball winning midfielder we have so few of them in the club and I just felt I'd bring one up for a cheap fee 800,000 but because he's played so many games in the first division already it's uh, against the rules to have someone like that uh, playing for you outside the um, transfer window I suppose and then Luis I was told by, by some young players and I obliged with this guy from the champions Flamengo uh, he was only very cheap but again I don't know if he can play in the league or not because um, I signed the mid-season but I do know for a fact that you can't play players that you signed during a cup stage so it's the quarterfinals at the minute which means I can't play him in the quarterfinals but we'll see if we can in the future um, and then I'd probably let go of someone else um, no I actually am not responsible for any of these but um, I, I don't want to forget about these under 20s either this is the bulk of the squad um, and uh, let's just see some of the uh, future stars uh, Batata um, I don't really see much in him just yet but uh, according to the assistant manager he could be absolutely brilliant so we'll see what he can do uh, we've also got Palaco only at 15 years of age he could be a great goalkeeper uh, Mar Marlos Vicinius um, at only 15 could be another uh, GM of a player but again I don't know as I haven't met them properly yet uh, Thiago is a defensive mid here, he's here as well uh, Rodriguez also at 15 great looking player according to the uh, assistant but I don't know and then a, another striker who's injured and badly um, as a matter of fact he's dislocated his shoulder but Hugo Leonardo could be a brilliant player in future and then the reserves have a few players as well but mostly of them most of them are out on loan uh, Leonardo has actually gone to America and he could be brilliant so I don't know why we haven't got him uh, Jabers uh, let me see um, yeah he's, he's brilliant I really should bring him back um, but I can't uh, that's typical isn't it but fabulous player I only noticed him now and the MLS season is underway so we'll see if he can do a good job for Orlando um, this guy Nunes is also promising uh, he's in Portugal we've got Francisco Carlos uh, he's at Carpati very very good player Embu very good player Gabriel fabulous looking player and Silas also very useful looking so we have a bright future ahead of us it's just a matter of getting the presence sorted out and we should be very very good uh, I've sorted out the staff as well 
Uh, it didn't take me long to become the undisputed best in the league, but in some of these departments we were really, really dreadful, and we had to bring in new coaches immediately. But now, uh, with only eight scouts, we're already the best in the entire division, and we have four physios, which also helps us become the best in the league. Um, let me see. Um, I can talk about some of them really quickly by now. I've probably gone way over time, and I'm getting uh, text messages. Um, so let me see staff. So, uh, Lukas is my new assistant manager. He is so much better than the previous guy. He can, he can teach the players how to attack as well on the training ground. It's just his uh, potential um, and current ability judgments aren't so good. But I did need another sort of coach just in case I wouldn't be granted uh, extra coaches. Um, but I actually was, so that's why I have so many. We have a new director of football that I poached from Santos and he is excellent. We have Bosco, the new goalkeeping coach. Um, Thiago Junior Crunivel is a physio. Uh, Budna is a scout, very, very good from Argentina. Barbosa de Sousa is also a coach. He can do the attacking stuff and the mental and the ball control and stuff like that. We've got Rodney. He's a former Brazilian center back. I don't know if you'd recognize him, but I'll show you his face. Uh, there he is. He played in Belgium, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, in Austria. Yeah, if you recognize him from Red Bull Salzburg. Uh, you know, he's a brilliant coach. Uh, we have Thiago Neves as well. Uh, the under-20s managers, Diogo Oliveira. Uh, and Jonathan Copete from Colombia will be a scout. And we let go of Valdir Bigode and, and Gomez de Lima as well. Not very good, in my opinion. But we'll be uh, replacing more coaches again in the winter or the summer, sorry, as we need to, um, well, we need to make sure everything is up to scratch because some of the departments aren't, like, I don't like, um, this, where is he, where is he, uh, this guy, uh, Musa, he's not so good, so I have to get rid of him when his contract expires, but either way, this is so much better than how I found it, and if we uh, win this cup game, then we'll be in a phenomenal position to push on and go for a rare double, so we'll see you uh, very, very soon for the uh, Cup quarterfinal second leg against Sao Paulo. I hope to see you there. Bye for now.